Welcome back to the Clubhouse 54 podcast. I'm Michael Little, joined by Tyler Wax, and we have a special guest with us today, the owner of Motivate Fitness, Bill Tokmajian. Hey, Bill, welcome to the show. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Thanks for having me. What's up, Tyler? Great yeah. job on the pronunciation there, Mike. Yeah. Yeah, did I do okay? Killed it, buddy. Well done. Yep. There you, go. you got it, man. There we Billy, go. It's, I, I, I tried my hardest there. Billy T. Yeah. Billy make it, right. Make it easy. Billy T. <laughs> I just call you Bill. It, it just seems a lot easier. <laughs> That's fine. Oh, good. Uh, I love it. So, so Bill, so on the Clubhouse 54 podcast, what we do is uh, we interview our guests um, that have, you know, unique stories or have an influence in the golf world. And we just want to share that with everybody. And, you know, we yet to have anyone that's involved with fitness on the podcast. So I'm really excited about this. And you and I have known each other for about two years now. And right. uh, we spent some time together over the winter this this season to try to get me ready and get my body more in golf shape. And uh, it's uh, it's been paying off. Um tremendously for me in the last few weeks here. So awesome. um, as I get ready for a major tournament coming up. So, you know, I just want to share a little bit about what you do with with our viewers and um, and really to start with it, just, you know, if you don't mind just giving people a background about who you are and a little intro on you and and then we can get more involved with the fitness stuff later. Sure, sure. Yeah. Th thanks for having me on, Mike. Um, yeah. You know, I, I got started in the fitness industry just because I wanted to help people you know, and um, kind of morphed from that, you know, working with different populations and all that. And I, um, you know, been doing this 25 years now. So I've been pretty lucky to, to, to work with a lot of different people, a lot of different populations, help a lot of people out. And, you know, I, I um, you know, got to a point in my career where I wanted to open up a gym to be able to help even more people. So back in 2015, we opened up Motivate Fitness. I, I did that on my own, opened up Motivate Fitness. And, uh, we're open in Springhouse, um, Lower Gwinnett, and, you know, it's, it's just been a great 10-year run right now. We've been helping a lot of people out, and we've designed what we do in the in Motivate Fitness is we um, focus more on individualized programming, meaning that when people come into the gym, we do an assessment on them, and we get a deep background on where they are with their fitness levels, any medical uh, injuries, you know, things like that. And then we create a customized program for them. So everything we do is individualized, which then sort of led me into doing a lot of the golf stuff, which uh, we could talk about it a little later. But how how individualizing programs, especially for golfers, really helps in conjunction with uh, working with the pros. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I know that I've had some experience at your at your gym. And, um, you know, what I thought is great is really that individual you know, relationship that I feel like I've built with all the instructors that are there. And it's, you know, it's for Tyler to, to learn and our listeners. I mean, it's, you know, when I got there, it was it was exactly what he said. Here's the assessment. And then it was, well, what are your goals? And that's what I thought was most important. There was asking what the goals were versus, you know, just, hey, here we go. You're in the gym now. This is the program that you're on. And maybe that's not beneficial to me and what I was looking to do. So I really like that individual approach to it and uh you know really gearing it around what my strengths and weaknesses were in my body and goals for you know in my case it was golf um right. you know we, before you started motivate fitness what where were you working at a gym like a ymca or something like yeah, that or? yeah so i i started i started like right out of college i started at a small little gym and then ended up in an la fitness and then in 2000 um I started at Talmore Country Club. So that's when I started getting into working with uh, more of the golfers back in 2000. And, you know, it's funny, at, at that time, there wasn't really anything specific to golf. You know, it wasn't until about 2006, 2007 when I started, when I learned about uh, Titleist Performance Institute, the TPI program. And that started to dive real deep into the golfer, uh, you, you know, golf assessment and things like that. So that was you know, th th then from there, I was able to jump into, to, you know, motivate fitness, opening that up. Can we touch on that a little bit? So how how was fitness different for golfers before TPI came out? Yeah, great, great question. So like I said, you know, everything I try to do is individualized. And up until that point, there wasn't really any type of assessment or any 
any uh, tool that a trainer could use to really identify any type of uh, weakness, limitation, anything like that that could affect the golf swing. And uh, like I said, I, I when I got into TPI, the, the thing I really liked about it, what really intrigued me was that Titleist came up with it. Titleist Performance Institute, the guy, Greg Rose and, and Dave Phillips, came up with an actual assessment that it's 13, 14 tests that you could actually walk the golfer through and then start to identify if they have any specific limitations in their shoulders, hips, thoracic spine, and then how those limitations tie directly into the golf swing. And the interesting part is that it's pretty spot on. So if, if somebody's taking a lesson and it's sort of the same thing over and over and over again, and they just don't get any better, most of the time, it's not, it's not, it's not the instructor that's doing a bad job or that the, the student doesn't understand it. It's their body just can't physically do what it needs to do. And that's what I thought was really cool about the, about the assessment. It was up until that point, we didn't have any tools that, that were able to identify anything like that. And it's amazing how helpful that is. So now I actually use screens for every every person that comes into the gym, whether they're a golfer or not, and allows us to identify what exactly is going on in their body and what they can and can't do, and then work on the weak, weakest spots. So is there technology that you use behind that as well, or is it just more of a, hey, do these stretches or try to put the body in certain situations, or do you actually measure those movements as well? So yeah, it's a good question. There's not, we don't use like any type of, um, you, you know, computer programming or anything like that. It's more of a, an assessment of uh, like a physical assessment and we'll actually move the joints, watch somebody move and see how they move. Um, so we don't really have anything computerized at this point. Um, I know there's some things out there, but we're just, we're just doing it more, um, uh, from a standpoint of assessing what that what the movements look like and then doing a little hands-on stuff to see if there's tightness and restrictions in joints. So if I let's just say that I went and took a lesson with someone and they had like a K vest or something that can measure some movements, does that help you to have that information when I walk in the door or no? It does because it allows us to then say, okay, that's, you know, the KVEST is telling us this piece of information. And then here's what we see when we go through this specific assessment. And then we would start to tie things together. So, yes, yeah, so it definitely helps. Okay. All right. Now, do you do, do you correlate any of that directly with uh, handicaps? So I, I don't, I usually don't, it can be, there is like a, um, you can do it like a, uh, fitness score, like a fitness handicap, but it doesn't, I, I'm not aware of anything where it would directly tie to, well, if you have these physical limitations, then your golf handicap is going to be this, we would do it more along the lines of, okay, well, here's all the physical limitations you have from a fitness handicaps. This is where you would be. That makes sense. It's not a golf okay. handicap. It's it's a fitness. It's a, it's just the score we use for for a fitness side, but it won't directly correlate. But what will directly correlate is that if you have limited, let's say, shoulder rotation, or or but a big one is external rotation in the shoulder. If you a lot of people don't have that, so if we're trying to get them the shell of the club, it's not going to happen because they physically can't get there. So so we could see it. Uh, you know, so if if, if we know that uh, somebody's struggling with shallowing a club and we see that that shoulder external rotation is limited. We know that, that that will definitely match up. Bill, is there, is there a higher percentage or, or a majority of, of, you know, your customers that will come in that you're going to work with? Um, are, are you seeing something in 80% of them that all golfers should look to, to improve whether, uh, you know, obviously flexibility, rotation comes to mind for for probably everybody at least mm -hmm. as for me um but is there something that you'll see in almost you know nine out of ten golfers that that come in that you want to work on yeah great question um you know i think the biggest thing we see is is just a general sort of weakness and and what i mean by that is most people that come in the gym are now behind a desk sitting all day right? Yeah. Everybody sits all day. So what we tend to see is that the shoulders start to round forward, the head gets pushed forward, right? They're very weak in the glutes and core. So 
now, now that can that can sort of match up differently with with swing faults, but from a general physical standpoint, that's typically what we say. And I'd say we see that in in not just the golfers, but just about everybody. Because again, we're we're a sedentary population. Everybody's on a desk, behind a keyboard, you know, on the phone. So we we tend to start seeing more of that rounded posture, the head forward, which then can affect your setup, right? So if you're rounded forward, it's going to get be hard to get into a good setup position. If we're rounded forward, then it gets it's it, it's hard to rotate the spine, so we can lose some some you know range of motion there, and then it'll affect the shoulders because if everything's rounded forward. And again, we can't externally rotate the shoulders. So, yep. so I would say that's the biggest thing we see is that posture. I would bet everybody listening is probably sitting up a little bit. More. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, everyone's sitting up with the chin back, right? Back. <laughs> if you think about it, everybody listening is probably doing the same thing, right? Sitting forward, around yeah. and forward, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So that's the biggest thing we see. Interesting. Hmm. So. When you after you do these assessments and then you develop programs for everybody, is everyone's program? I understand that it's individualized. Everyone's going to be a little bit different, but do you try to get people in similar spots to you know, like say, help help just with the flow of things more, um, or say like to help build not only okay, well we have they have limitations here or there, so we need to you know, work a little bit of stretching, but then do you try to build a little bit of power in with some of it as well? Or is that all kind of scattered throughout? Yeah, great question. So typically what we'll do is we'll always start with the limitations first, right? You always identify the weakest link and then we start to fix that. Okay. And that could be, you know, be whatever that, that limitation is, right? Does it need more mobility? Does it need more strengthening? Whatever that is. But to your point, like, yeah, we want to try to, let's say mainstream everybody, right? So that Hopefully we get the body moving where there are no limitations. Then we can get into a basic routine of, of squatting and deadlifting and pushing and pulling, you know, things like that. So the goal is to actually get everybody into, you know, a, a, a regular movement pattern type program. But until you fix the limitations, you're not, you know, it's, it's a process. And then you work on strength and power and speed, you know, all the components then that, that would fit into a, a, program right so what people's I, this may be a dumb question but so do people's limitations then limit them with how far they can go as far as their fitness program yeah i mean that's a good question right if somebody has you know back issues right it can absolutely limit what they're going to be able to do uh, you, you know fitness uh, fitness isn't the cure for everything sometimes these limitations are you know, structural, there's arthritis, there's, you know, a lot of times we see arthritis because we're, we're working with people in, a, in an older population. So, you know, you're not going to outstretch that in, in kind of thing. So, you know, there, there can at some point be limitations, right? If you just don't have, if the spine's fused together, if there's a lot of arthritis in the knees, they're just not going to bend and work the way they should. So, yeah, so there are, there are going to be at, at some point, depending on the people that the limitation is the limitation. And then from there, it's just working around that. Okay. Yeah. Like, well, as you know, I have two bad shoulders, so right. I, I can't do anything overhead press. And right. apparently what we found out was I can't jump either. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. That's a perfect segue, Mike, because I've been waiting, Mikey, I've been waiting to ask this and thinking about the timing of it. I want to know. So, Mike's when Mike came in, what's what was his biggest strength? You were surprised at what was his biggest weakness? And I will, I'll shout out for the former Quadzilla before we signed Saquon Barkley in Philadelphia. Mike is absolutely a house from the waist down. So, yeah. um, you know, the 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 dude's built like a brick shit house. <laughs> the best golf balance I've ever seen, but he can't stand on one foot. So he's a complete anomaly to me. I'd love to know what you saw, you know, bringing him in and putting him through kind of your testing protocol as you as you figured out what his uh, you know, workouts were going to be. Yeah. So I, I, you know, my the shoulders were a big issue for Mike and he had something going on in the left side and we weren't really too sure what that was all about. 
Um, so with Mike, we just we started out. It was really more or less starting him out with um, just some basic stuff, core strengthening. Uh, we gave him a, a warm up, sort of specific to strengthening the shoulders, mobilizing the shoulders, mobilizing the thoracic spine. Um, and to your point, yeah, the legs were strong, but because he wasn't really working out, that we started him out with a, just a slower, more generalized strength training program and and that started to fix a lot of things um you know getting his legs stronger getting his core stronger you know the shoulders were always still something we had to work around right mike so that you know so we talked a little earlier about well the always fix limitations not necessarily we didn't really fix the the, the, the overhead problem if you will but we were able to work around it and develop a lot of upper body strength even working around bad shoulders yeah, which is which is impressive, and and those and those quads and calves got even bigger as if it was bigger, possible. So, bigger. well, I, I think the first week, so what was it about four weeks? Your your uh, hex bar squat went from like I don't know, like seventy five pounds up to what did we get up to? Like two hundred five? I think you were getting at. Well, I think we we maxed. I think we well we didn't max it, but I think we got it up to like two thirty there in like four or five weeks. Yeah, for, for reps, for, for like five or six reps. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, yeah, so you're right. Is And 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 as a golfer, how important is low body? I mean, low body strength is so important. Like you said, it's stability. It's, it's being able to create ground force reaction, right? The stronger my legs are, the yeah. more stable my base is, the more balance I'm going to have, and then the more force I can apply through the ground, up through the body, and out through the club. So, yeah, I think we know we saw a big jump in speed. How much how much are you up now? What's your what's your total speed now? Well, when I came to you, my seven iron speed was like 83.4. It wasn't okay. really that fast. And um I'm now up to 91. Yeah. So seven seven. So we, we grow at about about eight miles an hour in right. combat speed. But but as you and I discussed, Bill, and and I, and this is gonna be a two part here. So one, I hit I'm hitting the ball much more solid more than i am creating more speed tyler mm -hmm. so it's more about i now don't have to compensate in my swing because i have that strength to hit it solid so i don't want to swing at 91 miles an hour with a seven iron i don't care to do that i want it to be at 88 miles an hour and hit it in the center of the face and get consistent ball contact every time without having to work for it yeah you know because that 88 is going to go further than the 91 just because of contact right yeah, consistent. And then now I forget the second part of what I wanted to talk about. Oh, oh. So the other thing is, I by having more balance, I know this may sound weird. I actually have a little less balance because what I can do now is I can like, especially with the driver. Now I can fire at it, and I actually am falling off of the ball just a little bit post imp or, or prior after impact, post impact, because I'm trying to generate so much speed and so much force to where I can catch myself from falling over now. So I have a little bit of unbalance in there because of how balanced I am at impact where mm -hmm. before I was trying to get the impact and trying to find balance and actually slowing everything down to try to keep myself in balance through, through the ball. So that, that to me is what I've noticed the most. Like I'll hit a drive now and I'm like, man, I'm not, I'm not even in balance. Like this is really strange, but I'm hitting it more solid and I know at, at impact, I'm as stable as I can be. So, and that I attribute all that to, to fitness. And, you know, maybe that has a lot to do with some of the anomaly of, of what Scotty Scheffler's doing right now. And everyone can't figure out, well, how's this guy falling all over the place, but hitting in a million miles. Maybe it's because he is so balanced at that impact location and he knows it that he feels, okay, I can do whatever I want now to just continue to generate speed. Right. Uh, how much truth is that, Bill? That's a, you know, I, that's a great question. I don't, I don't know that much about, you know, I'm not a swing mechanics guy, but I can certainly say that the more stable you are to your point at impact, the more force you can produce, right? So if I'm losing balance pre-impact, I'm not going to be able to produce a lot of force, but at impact, if my feet are firmly planted in the ground and my legs are strong and, and everything's stable at impact, you're going to hammer it, right? And then whatever happens after impact, if you fall off balance, it, it doesn't matter, right? You, at, at impact, you were stable, and that's exactly what you were talking about, finding the center of the face, right? So I, now maybe I'm not even swinging hard, but now I'm absolutely finding center 
face every single time. You're just going to hit it further. I think I think stability is the most important thing. So when we saw your leg strength go through the roof, you were getting more stable in that low body at impact. And then whatever happens, and, and that's I think what you see with Scotty Scheffler, right? At impact, he's he's real stable, and then then he just spins out and whatever it doesn't matter. Ball is gone. Yeah. Right. Like shoot. Yeah, and I think. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, it's like, you know, think about trying to shoot a cannon off a canoe. It's not going to work real well, right? The low body's not stable, but you put that cannon on stable ground and it fires, right? Or a bow and arrow, right? If you're, if you're pulling that bow, right? If that, if that front arm holding that bow is all wobbly, you're not going to be able to pull that string back. But the more stable that that arm is holding that bow, I can pull that string back and create a lot of force. And that's what you're doing with the low body. I'm stealing that shoot a cannon off a canoe. That is, yeah. that's, yeah. that's like Mike trying to do handstands, right, Mikey? <laughs> you don't want to see that. I'll break my neck. <laughs> don't, don't do that. <laughs> well, and we, and we do know that Scotty Sheffer does a lot of fitness. You know, he's, yeah. you know, he yeah. golf forever is that's, yep. that's his image, right? Yep. I mean, that's Scotty yep. Sheffer. So he's doing a ton of that fitness. So I yep. think there's a lot to that. Um, and you know what I saw was the more my warm up program, Tyler. I think helped me more than anything else. Um, you know, obviously getting stronger helps, but I'm able to now stretch my body and move my body in positions I didn't even know were possible. You know, just going through that that warm up routine that that Bill and his team put together for me, and you know, it's it really does help get my body loose and prepare me to go play golf, but not loose to the point where. I can't stabilize it, you know, and that's, and that was a big thing that I talked to Bill a lot about was, Hey, I don't want to lose the stability by getting stretched out too far here. I, they're, they're my, my body is used to being tight. So if I start stretching my muscles too much and ha end up with too much flexibility, now I'm going to start making changes to my golf swing. And my biggest thing was, as we all know on, on this podcast is my, my golf swing is very unique and if I start making changes to that in a major way, then I'm going to start to lose what has allowed me to be successful. So all my goal was, was to just get stronger and be able to hit the ball. I, and what I thought I was going into was to gain as much speed as I could. But in reality, what it ended up being was to gain strength, to gain ball contact more than it was to gain club head speed. That ball contact meant means so much more. So um, the over, did a the very good job with that. Overstretching points a great one because I yeah. I think probably the worst yes. round of golf I ever played. I was playing in a um, I was I was I was playing in a uh, like a fundraiser event, and they had a massage and stretching table, and I hit that around like the third hole. I think I did, and my my golf game was never worse in a round of golf after that. And I couldn't, I'm thinking like, oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be great. It usually takes me a couple holes to warm up. Cause I just, I hop out of the car. Most of the, I try to be consistent with what I'm doing. And a lot of the time when I play golf, it, it's, I don't have a ton of time to do mm -hmm. it. So when I go to play golf, I'm usually not hitting balls before I'm hopping out of the car. I'm going to the first tee, taking a couple of swings. And I've, I've kind of built that into my routine. Even when I do go hit balls to practice, I'll do the same thing. I'll pretend I'm hopping out. I'll hit a driver. I'll, you know, I'll go through the routine as if I'm going to play golf. But that overstretching, I think, is a is a real thing. I just realized at least because that 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 was probably the worst round of golf I've ever played. And it was a nice massage and stretch, but too much. Yeah. You know, there's a lot, there's, yeah, there's a lot that, that, that revolves around actual stretching, right? What are we trying to do? And yeah. not every, so the first thing you have to look at, and this is part of the assessment is why am I tight, right? That's number one. Why am I tight? Is it because I'm weak or is it because I actually have like a fascial restriction, right? So there's a big difference there, right? And with Mike, with the warm up we did, it wasn't so much static stretching where we we're just trying to hang and stretch. We were trying to get him to add movement. So, what he's really doing was he was building stability as he was doing his warm up, which then allowed him to create more length. So, sometimes it's when we lose this stability, the muscle creates this fight, fake tightness, then we can't move. 
and that might be where you are, Tyler, right? You didn't, your body's tight for a reason. Now all of a sudden we just stretched the crap out of it and made things loose that really shouldn't have been loose. Now you lost a lot of stability. So yeah. there's a fine line with stretching, when to perform stretching and what type of stretching to do. There's isometric stretching, which is really, really good versus passive, meaning somebody's just going to crank your leg back and you're just going to do it that way. So I'm actually in the process of putting together a specific stretch program, you know, for golfers and for general population, because stretching is not the same for everybody, right? Some people need to be stretched because it's a true muscle fascia restriction, or some people need to gain more stability to then create range of motion. They're tight for a reason because they have no stability and balance because they sit all day. They sit behind a computer. So just the fact if you got up and started walking and walked two miles, you may notice your body loosens up completely and it had nothing to do with stretching, right? So stretching is a great point. That's probably another another really good episode just, just to talk about that and all the different, uh, different uh, ways to stretch and, and when should you, when shouldn't you, that kind of thing. I love that. Is there, um, it, whether it's one or two or three, like if you had three recommendations, I'll call it for mm -hmm. people exercise wise, golfers particularly, what are the three exercises that you would recommend? Whether it's, you know, push ups or sit, yeah. sit ups, like something that everybody could kind of do, um, maybe with or without uh, the, the right equipment. That, that's a great question. You know, and, and the thing is, again, that's where the assessment is important because it's really the three great exercises for you, Tyler, maybe the three worst for Mike, right? Yep. But what I would recommend in general is like we talked about before, right? Everybody's sitting in this posture, right? So I think number one, getting up and walking. Walking is incredibly underrated. And if you're not walking enough, what like walking teaches you balance and coordination between the body the way it's supposed to move so i would say number one just try to get up and walk a few miles a day right get up from your desk walk drink water water's a big overlooked thing right drink your water nobody nobody hydrates right when when our body is not hydrated it, you've ever seen a dish sponge that's that doesn't have any water and it's all dried up well that's what the muscles get like right so walking and drinking water are two of the best things and then I like just getting against the wall and just stretching the arms straight back. I think I think those are maybe three things that you could do that are super easy that that you know you don't need anything to do. That's really That's good really advice. advice, especially the yeah, water part. What it's, I'm telling you, it's it, you know we just most people don't drink enough water. Half your body weight, you know, in water is is where we want to go. You know, get it, get stop drinking the sodas and the juices, all that. All that shit has just so much sugar in it, right? Get away you don't from like that. my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, look, I would never tell I'm a coffee drinker, so I, I, you know, balance. I wouldn't say don't drink your coffee, but drink your water too. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, I think walking's a great one too. It's it's something that um, yeah. I've incorporated uh, over the past six months to a year. Where you know, prior to, I never, I didn't look at it as exercise or anything right, like right, that it's kind of like right. i'm not this isn't a workout i'm going for a walk um right. but it it has made a massive difference i would say in just kind of getting out moving getting your body going um, i believe it i believe it right and it's and that's i think the thing right most people don't consider that exercise but it's so good for the body yeah um, just, just to get up and move and you know there's research that shows that walking after dinner reduces blood sugar so if you have if you're somebody that that tends to run a little high with blood sugar walking after dinner is really important so yeah I, that would be the number one thing right well two walk and drink your water i so have, doing my push-ups is hurting me is what you're saying yeah with those shoulders oh. Mike. <laughs> yeah well it, you know it just depends oh. right so how much, how, how, and I'm not trying to take away from what you do, but how much of it is, is hitting balls considered exercise? Well, yeah, I mean, I think you're, you know, you're, you're obviously burning calories and things like that. Um, you know, the thing with the golf swing is it's one-sided, right? So 
I, I think if you are swinging a golf club, I think you should turn around and swing opposite handed. And, you know, TPI did a study where if, if, if you, you need to be within, if, if you want to increase speed, I, I, I got to, I, I, I got to say this right. If you're trying to increase speed, right. And you're right-handed, your left-handed swing should be 10, at least at minimal 10% of your right-handed swing. So if you're swinging a hundred right-handed, you should be swinging at least 90% left-handed. If, if you're only at hundred, if you're a hundred right-handed and 70 left-handed, there's a huge imbalance in the body, right? Which could then create some issues. So we always want to try to build balance. So hitting balls, I, I think if, if you put like a, um, a watch on and measured that, yeah, I'm sure you, there'd be, there'd be, you know, heart rate benefit and calorie burn, things like that. But I think, I, I think it's important to switch and do it left-handed or vice versa as well. I love that. We're, Mikey, we are on to something with our left-handed golfing. When, right. every, you know, Mike and I, yeah. So I was just thinking that Tyler, you're building ba- you are, you're building balance, right? It would be like going into the gym and only doing a rotation one way. Never oh, doing it, right? Or, right. Or only, the, right. The thought of that drives me insane. It's, right. <laughs> it's, right. It's, it, but uh, people are doing it all day, you know, all day, every day in, yep. in a golf swing. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And you know, that would be a question for you guys, right? Are pros doing that? I haven't, I haven't, ever research that but do pros actually flip around opposite hand and and, and just make swings it's a great question uh, I mean, you know you, you see you see the pga tour players when they have to do it yeah they do a pretty good job at it have you noticed good, that? right exactly I, they are pretty good at going opposite hand and flipping the wedge over and hitting a shot no doubt so something tells me they probably do have a left-handed or an opposite handed club sitting around and they're practicing that i because they, the amount of balls they're hitting one direction Right. I, I feel like you have to balance that out some way. Yep. Yep. And look, I mean, their resources are much greater than ours for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, they're, they're working with TPI coaches every single day and I'm sure they're being told, Hey, switch that, switch this up yeah. for, even if it's just for 20 swings, probably. Right. I don't think they're, they're going through a session with it, but right. they, they have to be at least turning around occasionally um, to work on that. No doubt. And that might be built into their program where they're their fitness program, where they're actually doing a little, if they're right-handed, maybe doing enough, an extra set or two left-handed. Like if they're doing a rotational drill, you know, you know, they may be doing that way, which, which would make sense. Yeah. Hey, Bill, I, I know we're, uh, we're coming up here on time. I have a potentially derailing question, but <laughs> it hit me right in the beginning of this podcast. I've been, I've been, I've been chewing on it the whole time. How good's your memory? How good is my? It's okay. <laughs> okay, I'm test. I'm going to test it right now. All right. I'm almost certain that we met before. Do you, by chance, vacation in Avalon or Ocean City? I don't. Ocean City. You go to Ocean City. We do. Did a weird dude that looks like me. Come up to you on the beach and ask you your body fat percentage like five <laughs> yeah. or six years ago. My, my wife still talks about that. <laughs> Dude, that Dude, was that that was me. That's so crazy. <laughs> that was me. That is the that I I I was sitting here looking at you when we got on the podcast. I don't I have an elephant memory. I do not forget when I that's meet somebody. that's fantastic. And man. I'm like, I know this guy. How do I know him? <laughs> And I'm piecing it together. So if you go back and watch the podcast, the first five minutes, look at my face and it's me registering how we met. And I went up to a <laughs> random dude. This Let me tell everybody who can't see him. This dude is jacked out of his mind. I think, what are you, 8% body fat? You were when I saw you then. And yeah. I had, right. I was sitting there talking about it with my brother and my brother and I had a side bet going on what your body fat percentage was. <laughs> I had to, I had to go find out. So I went right up to you. That's, that is hilarious. Dude, that's crazy. <laughs> What's that? Two, two, three years ago, right? Uh, it, yeah. It, I mean, right. it, yeah, I'm thinking, I was thinking like it had to be at least, yeah. at least two or three, two, yeah. between two and five years ago, somewhere in that. That is so funny, for, man. For 45 seconds. And I remember talking to you and you'd mentioned, um, you're in this space and you're a golfer 
and yeah, you know, every you channel. all that together i'm like that, yeah there's no chance it's anybody else so that's so funny man that's small good. that's world. absolutely small incredible that's right insane insane it, it is yeah. yeah yeah my wife still talks about that you remember that guy came up to you on the beach no women ever do it's just yeah. guys yeah. it's only it's only guy we talked about that it's right. only guys. you oh, guys you, we do you we, don't, we don't do it for the girls we do it for the boys <laughs> You got to tell your wife, be like, hey, remember that? Creep? I will. It's just going to blow her mind. Yeah, this creep showed up again today and was like, hey, remember me from Ocean City? I couldn't remember where right. it was because I I vacationed in Avalon for you know, my whole life. And a handful of years ago, we started switching back and forth. Every yeah. couple of years, we'll do Ocean City or we'll do Avalon. So I didn't remember which beach it was, but you know, I remembered that's, meeting you. So I had to mention that. Before that's so know. cool. But see, that's why I got to be nice to everybody, right? You never know when they're going to come back that's, to you, right? Because if I was just think about it, right, you would have been like, "F this guy." Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you What do you mean, you weirdo? What's my body? What's your body fat percentage? <laughs> that's so such. Fun. That's such a Tyler thing to do as well. <laughs> It is. Wow. It is. I, I you know, I, it's on par with my character. So right, right, it really I'm is. Consistent. I'm very consistent. <laughs> that's, that's well, now all my thoughts of what I wanted to ask Bill just yeah. went completely out the window. <laughs> hey, yeah, right? This is the most amazing discovery that we have in, in Clubhouse 54 podcast history. <laughs> so. Correct. That is. That is. Right. Wow. And it's all about Bill's body fat, too. Yeah, Interesting. Fat, right? yeah. Which, again, I mean, oh. shout out, shout out Billy T. Because right? dude was fucking yeah, now, yoked. Yoked on now I got Now I got to make sure, now I got to make sure I stay at that number, you know, because now people will be like, dude, what's your body fat? I, I'm going to be looking for you this summer. Dude. <laughs> all right. I got to get hard Tyler's going to do. Yeah, Tyler's gonna find you, take pictures of you on the beach, and he's gonna start this like Billy T Instagram profile of just you and your body. <laughs> it's like where's Waldo, but where's Billy T? Right. Oh, so funny. <laughs> oh I love it. Hilarious. Oh, good stuff. Awesome. All right. So, Bill, so we have one final question for you. Yeah. Um, for this episode. So, what advice would you have for anybody that's looking to get into your field? Um well, that's a, that's a good question because, you know, there's a lot of a lot of certifications out there now. Right. And um, I think the first thing you need you really need to do is invest in yourself and get a degree, you know, in kinesiology, exercise physiology, because you, you, you get the understanding of everything. Right. Uh, of the whole energy systems and, and how the body moves and all that. And then from there, you know, get some kind of nationally recognized certification like um nsca national strength and conditioning association ace you know things like that and then definitely if you're going into the golf world the tpi assessment is is or the le at least level one of the tpi is is definitely the route you want to go all right now do you have any recommendations on where they would start you know it would it be like out of YMCA, Boys and Girls Club, fitness, like what type of center they should start yeah. at? Yeah. So, you know, I think, I, I think number one, you cut your teeth with friends and family, right? That's what I did, right? Started writing programs for friends and family just because, you know, you're getting, you're, you're learning this, right? And it's, it's hard to charge somebody something that you don't even know, right? So start with friends and family, start to assess them, write programs for them. What did you do right? What did you do wrong? What did you do different? Then, yeah, then then I think, you know, there's always uh, opportunities at the bigger gyms, um, you know, to like the LA fitnesses and lifetimes and things like that. But even small studios like me, I'm always looking for interns. So I'm always looking for somebody who really wants to get into the industry and make a career of it because it's a tough industry to make a career out of. So, um, you know, I, I would recommend going going to smaller gyms like us and, and seeing if you could intern for a little bit and, and really learn how to program and things like that. And, uh, you know, because a lot of gyms like me look for people that are educated and really want to grow within the industry. And then there's a lot of opportunity there. Awesome. Awesome. Great stuff. Bill, it's been an absolute pleasure. We're yeah. definitely going to have you yeah. on again for I'd sure. Love to. Love to. Um, yeah, th thank you so much for all your time here today. Thank you for everything that you've done for me. And thanks for, uh, you know, that that excitement there with Tyler and your connection on the beach. <laughs> Dude, I'm so awesome. Glad.
Bill, awesome. It was, it was great meeting you again. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, Tyler. This time Absolutely. The tarp, tarp's on this time. That's fine. <laughs> right. Uh, Next one we'll do at the beach. Next podcast we'll do at the beach. All let's right. Do, let's do it. Crazy, crazy <laughs> small. <go>. Awesome. <laughs> Billy T for Motivated Thanks. Fitness. Thanks, Bill. Thank Thanks you, so much, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Be well. Yep. You too.